we have a stealthy solar storm that's Earth-directed, a bright region emerges and begins to flare, and the sun's far side begins to get busy. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is picking up a bit. There's so much to see. As we turn and look at our front-sided disk, you can see back on the 10th, down in the south and in the north, we had a little bit of a puff. It's very, very difficult to see. If you blink, you miss it. But this was part of a stealthy solar storm that lifted off and is headed partially toward Earth. Now, most of it is going west, but there is this wispy bit that is definitely headed toward Earth. As we take a look at our coronagraphs, you can actually see this really weak halo. This is an Earth-based chronograph from LASCO, and that halo is definitely indicating that something is Earth-directed. Whether or not we're actually going to get any serious impact from that is left to be seen. Most likely not. It's just a precursor of what is to come. Now, if we return to the disk, you can also see back around the 11th, well, actually back around the 9th, we actually had this bright region. This is region 2814 that was rotating into view and began to emerge and grow a little bit. By the 11th, it really started growing and we started getting a little bit of flare activity. In fact, if we switch to our magnetic configuration for this region, you can see a ton of growth. This is probably one of the most complex spot regions we've had of the cycle 25. You can see the colors kind of mixing a little bit and that's what's causing a little bit of flare activity right now and maybe a little noise on the bands. So we're getting excited because it's actually showing some level of activity we haven't seen in solar cycle 25 yet and we shall see if this region becomes an M flare player. Likely not, it's gonna stay pretty much at small flares, but hey, we got to start somewhere, right? Now, meanwhile, as we continue looking at the disk, we can also see just behind it, we have that big coronal hole. This coronal hole is going to be rotating into um, the Earth strike zone here in probably about uh, 10 days or so. And this coronal hole has sent us some fast wind before that's brought us up to storm levels. So, hey, if we don't get much from that stealthy solar storm that should be hitting Earth here in the next day or two, then easily in the next week or so, we'll be getting that fast wind from that coronal hole. And that should definitely give us a good chance for aurora easily at high latitudes and possibly down into mid latitudes. Switching to our M flare threat meter, as you can see from the last week, the X-ray flux has continued to be extremely low on Earth's day side. Uh, this means by proxy, the solar flux has been very low. In fact, we've been sitting at the low to mid 70s over the past week, which is at the low end of marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side for you emergency responders and amateur radio operators. But as you can see right about the 11th, you start noticing that X-ray flux rise a little bit. In fact, you can even even see a few small flares, the pop, 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 there that are B-class flares, almost C-class flares. This is from region 2814 as it really began an explosive growth. But this is really good news because not only are we seeing that activity rise, but also the solar flux is now in the high 70s. We're almost at the 80s. So this is great news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. We're getting closer and closer to the good range for radio propagation. Switching to our solar storm conditions, the last time we actually hit storm levels was clear back on the 7th. We had a pocket of fast solar wind that brought us up to active conditions and then storm levels for just a short while before we rapidly went back down to unsettled conditions. And then we kind of went down to quiet conditions. And we've been kind of hovering between unsettled and quiet conditions ever since. And sadly, these conditions are likely to persist for uh, probably the next week. Now we do have that stealthy solar storm that's on its way and it could hit us over the next day or so, but you know what? We're not expecting any fast solar wind with it, and so likely the impact is going to be very underwhelming. So if you're an aurora photographer and you're at high latitudes, well, you might get a little bit of kick and get a little bit of aurora, you know, intensification, but probably nothing at mid-latitudes. I'm not going to hold my breath that we're going to see much of anything at all from this uh, stealthy solar storm. So expect these, these low-level uh, conditions to continue over this next week until we get that big coronal hole rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and that could bring us back up to storm levels, but you're going to have to wait for it. 
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun partially from the side. And when you take a look at Stereo's view, the first thing you can see is region 2814 in the south. This is the region that's pretty much in Stereo's center disk there. This is the region that over the last couple days has really shown some explosive growth and is beginning to get a little bit flare active. And then just behind it, you can see that big coronal hole. That's the coronal hole that we're expecting to give us some fast solar wind over in, a, in about a week or so. But look just past it in the south, you can see yet another region really beginning to emerge over the past 24 hours and as that region emerges you see not just one but two solar storm launches you can see puffs that come off the sun in the south next to that coronal hole that is two solar storm launches and that means a lot of activity and a lot of growth from these new regions Plus, if you look in the north you can also see a little bit of activity and some new regions as well switching to our moon we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a third quarter. And by the 18th, the moon will still only be about 29% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, now's a good time. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that minor hit from that very weak, stealthy solar storm here over the next couple days, but because we're not really expecting much in the way of fast solar wind, the impact is likely going to be very underwhelming. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 20% chance of a major storm over the next couple days, but again, don't expect all that much, and then things should die down pretty much after that. Now, mid-latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled to, well, normal conditions, actually. <laughs> but we do have about a 15% chance of active conditions. Again, that may be a little bit overblown. There may not be all that much going on. And things will definitely settle down as we get further uh, in through the week. And then, of course, next week is when we really should be expecting to see a bit more in terms of fast solar wind from that much larger coronal hole that could be giving us some nice aurora even down to mid latitudes. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. Now we do have a bunch of bright regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, including region 2814, which is a sunspot cluster. And this region has actually been giving us a little bit of flare activity. In fact, we have about a 15% chance of C-class flares right now, but no risk for M-class flares. It doesn't seem to be growing quite that quickly but we will definitely keep our eyes on it. Now, luckily though, this C-class flare activity and the boost in the solar flux is not enough to cause GPS users any issues. You guys should still be getting some great reception on Earth's day side. Even in the dawn dust terminator should be pretty good, so don't worry about it too much right now. Meanwhile, we are boosting that solar flux up to almost the, the 80s. We might, in fact, at the end of the week, start seeing it boost up into the 80s, which means means we're getting into the higher end of marginal for radio propagation. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you should get a nice little boost in propagation this week, which could easily continue into next week. So enjoy. Now, meanwhile, uh, we also are still climbing out of solar minimum. So the cosmic ray flux continues to be a bit higher than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are still getting the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up. Let's hope solar cycle 25 is really beginning to get underway. Now first we have that stealthy solar storm that's on its way to Earth. Again, we're not expecting it to be a big impact, but aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you might get a little extra boost in that aurora viewing. So, you know, you got to stay on your toes a little bit. But people at mid-latitudes, probably not much to worry about. You're just going to have to wait until that bigger coronavirus hole rotates into the Earth's strike zone, which will be probably around the turn of the week, and then we could get aurora down to mid-latitude, so just wait for it. 
Now, meanwhile, we also have multiple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, including the sunspot region 2814. This has become a sunspot cluster, and believe it or not, we're actually getting a little bit of flare activity because it's a bit magnetically complicated. Now, on top of that, we also have some regions uh, on the sun's far side that are kind of growing pretty quickly too. We shall see if they're going to be sunspot regions, and if so, we might actually have some solar storm producers here. We've already seen a couple solar storms launch on the sun's far side. So we're going to be very anxious to see all of this stuff rotate into Earth view, and space weather next week might get even more exciting. Now, as far as your GPS users are concerned, well, you know, we've actually got pretty quiet space weather at Earth right now, so your GPS reception should look pretty good both on the day side and on Earth's night side. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.